Yeah, she is ready. She's just waiting on me. Leanne, how you doing, girl? I'm good. How are you? Good. Grand. Grand. <laughs> how was I'm your good. birthday? I, I'm doing so good. I can't hardly stand myself. Oh, that's good. Did you have a good birthday? I had one of the best I've ever had. I was with all five of my grandkids, both my kids, my children. And uh, it was just, we climbed up a mountain and it was just fun. Good. Spent about five hours with them, got back in the car and drove down here. So <laughs> it felt good. <laughs> That's a busy day. Hey, Brother George. Hey, Leanne. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm good. good. Thank you. I'm good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hi, Deborah and Lee and Pastor Campbell. I can't see or hear you, but I see your names. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for joining us. I am just going to introduce Leanne. Uh, we've had a good week. Uh, we had good uh, discussion on Monday night, me and George, tag team there, uh, after George preached on Sunday. And uh, the pastor even chimed in from his trip. So that was that was a treat. Uh, last night we had a great prayer meeting with Brother Campbell and some others who joined us. And uh, I have, uh, I just have to uh, warn you that I have seen the notes for class tonight, and it is it's going to be a good a good discussion here tonight. And I, I'm excited for you to uh, hear Leanne teach. I thought she did really well last week, and we've heard really good comments about it. And I'm a little bit biased, so uh, there you go. But Leanne, we're, we're glad to have you uh, teaching tonight. And uh, we pray this will be a blessing to you all. Pastor, you want to say anything uh, before we get started? Uh, no, except that you sort of put your wife on the spot. But I think she can, uh, I think she can handle it just fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she can. I'm always putting her on the spot. If we go somewhere, I'm... Yeah, I'm always putting her on the spot. I'm always saying, uh, oh, Leanne can sing. Leanne can do that. Leanne can do that. Okay. It's it's rever role reversal from uh, from normal, but a lot of uh, wives put their husband on the spot. I put her on the spot. Well, thank you, Leanne. Go ahead and uh, bless us tonight. Sure. Yeah, I hope to rise to the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. Is that, is that how it goes? <laughs> so um, last week we talked about the power of the tongue and uh, kind of what's in our heart comes out of our mouth and trying to uh, work on what comes out of our mouth. So tonight I'm going to teach on uh, the power of the mind. So kind of what's in our heads comes out of our mouth. So I want to kind of focus in on what's going on in our mind this week. Our behavior is always affected by what we think, by what we're thinking about. And for us to enjoy life to the fullest, we need to learn to identify and reject unhealthy thought patterns. <clears throat> Proverbs 4, 23 says, be careful how you think your life is shaped by your thoughts. So uh, our own thoughts, what we think about can hinder our own lives. So if we want to change our life, we need to change the way we think. Uh, how we think or see ourselves will affect the way we treat ourselves and handle problems, deal with relationships, and even the way we relate to God. <clears throat> when Jesus came, he offered us not only salvation, but the power to be set free from factors that control and prevent us from becoming who God wants us to be. So right now I kind of think the battle that's happening in our minds is kind of escalated because we're spending a lot of time in isolation. And sometimes spending a lot of time by yourself, your mind kind of runs away with you a little, little bit. So I wanna talk, kind of focus in on, on our minds and uh, what's happening uh, with our own thought life. So, uh, we are responsible not only for our actions, but 
for our thoughts. I know this is not something that we talk about a lot, but our thought life certainly matters to God. Uh, he has, in fact, judged people by the way of, of their thoughts in the past. Um, Acts, 20, Acts 8 verse 22 says, repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. So it's not even necessarily something that we've done, but something that we've thought about. We've harbored something in our heart that was uh, that was wicked. Um, Genesis 6, 5, the Lord saw how many, how great man's wickedness on the earth had become and that every inclination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. So I, we can see what people do and we can hear what people say, but the Lord knows what we're thinking. So we need to take a uh, our own thoughts captive. Uh, Jesus specifically condemns sins of thought in uh, Matthew 5, 28. But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery in, with her in his heart. So that's, he, God knows what's going on up here. Uh, we're accountable for our thoughts. And our thoughts are so important because our actions are birthed in our thoughts. They first start as a seed in our mind before we ever even act on it, which is why what we think matters to God. Uh, every thought is a seed. Uh, and uh, if we're going to plant seeds in our minds, we're going to reap those seeds in our lives. So if we're planting lemons, we're not going to reap oranges. We're going to reap lemons. So if we want to reap uh, oranges, <laughs> we need to plant oranges in our minds. So if we want to reap good things, we need to plant good seeds in our minds. Uh, Jesus condemned hatred, not only murder, uh, because hatred leads to a sin of action. So <clears throat> in Matthew 5, 21, and the first portion of 22 says, you have heard it said, to the people long ago, do not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. God is concerned with the seeds that we have growing in our minds. Paul saw a connection between Eve's deception, which happened in her mind, and our minds leading us away from Christ. In 2 Corinthians 11, 3, but I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. Uh, doubt begins with a seed, a thought seed. Uh, lots of thoughts can put a major stumbling block in our walk with Christ. So, you know, as believers, as people who are following after Christ, we're very concerned with sin and want to eradicate sin from our lives. So where does, where does uh, iniquity uh, otherwise, uh, uh, or sin or immorality, where does that come from? Uh, Psalm 73, verse 7 says, For their callous, from their callous hearts comes iniquity, the evil conceits of their minds know no limits. The psalmist is kind of equating here callous hearts with the evil of the mind. The mind is where wickedness comes from. So to put it simply, who controls the mind controls the person. Your thoughts dictate what you will do. Uh, Romans 8, 6, verses 6 and 7, the mind of a sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God, does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Uh, there's a famous quote by uh, Frank Outlaw, uh, where he says, watch your thoughts, they become words. Watch your words, they become actions. Watch your actions, they become habits. Watch your habits, they become character. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. It, everything leads back to what we're thinking about, what we're devoting time to in our own, in our own minds. 
um, some characteristics of the thoughts within the minds of the wicked are uh, uh, one, they are devoted to earthly things. Uh, Philippians 3, 18 and 19 says, many live as enemies of the cross. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. They do not think of God. Uh, Psalm 10, 4 says, in his pride, the wicked does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. Uh, the wicked are blinded. In 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. In order to win victory over flesh and sin, we must win the victory in our own minds. Satan tries to blind our minds, but Jesus opens our minds. Luke 24, verse 45. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. With salvation comes a new mind and a whole new way of thinking. Ephesians 4, verses 22 and 23. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds. In Romans 12, verse 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. A renewed mind is the mind of Christ. Verse, uh, 1 Corinthians verse 2, 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Isaiah 55, 8 says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, your ways, my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. When we become, when we come to Christ, our way of thinking is literally elevated. Uh, our thinking goes from being worldly thinking to Christ-like thinking. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts, and our job as believers is to try to elevate our way of thinking to thinking like Christ. We want to not only be like Christ and speak like Christ and act like Christ, we need to take on the thought and the character of Christ. We need to let the mind of Christ be the master of our minds. Let the mind of the master be the master of your mind. The renewing of the mind comes by the power of the Holy Spirit and submission to the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 5, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. We need to let, set aside what we desire and begin to desire what the Spirit desires. Wow. As Christians, we find victory in the mind by spiritual warfare. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The thoughts in our minds can become strongholds, um, but we don't have to accept them. We do not have to accept thoughts that we don't want to think. We can take those thoughts captive and make them obedient to Christ. We may not be able to choose our relatives, but we can choose our thoughts. That's kind of a crazy thought because most of the time you, you know you feel like something just pops in your head and you can't control what pops in your head, but you can control what you think about. Just because a thought jumps into your head does not mean you have to dwell on it. You can take it captive, push it out, and think on things that are Christ instead. <clears throat> uh, your thoughts have a lot more influence on who you're going to on who you are than who your relatives are. You may have a family history that lends itself to a certain uh, disposition, but your own thoughts 
can have a lot more control over who you are. So you have control over what you allow your mind to dwell on. Uh, how many, how many of you just as in like, have you, have you ever heard somebody say, or ever said yourself, uh, God spoke to me. I, you know, God, God said to me something. Um, <clears throat> probably most of us have felt God has spoken to us at some point in our walk with Christ. And certainly we've heard other people say, you know, God, God told me, but when we say that the vast majority of the time, most of us have not heard the audible voice of God come to us and say, do this. When we hear the Lord speak to us, it comes to us as a thought, really. It's a thought that has come into our mind. So <clears throat> usually the voice of God comes to us as a thought that's been planted by the spirit in our minds. Um, now, how do you know that it is the voice of God? Because Satan can also plant thoughts in your mind. So now we have two warring thoughts in our mind. Some thoughts are the voice of God speaking to us. Some thoughts are the accusations of Satan speaking to us. So how, how do we tell the difference? <laughs> like, how do we tell if a thought is from God or if a thought is from Satan? We need to test those thoughts against the word of God. If we're going to be believers that have an effective walk, we have to have the word of God inside of us. We need to know the word. That is how you know the voice of God. The voice of God does not contradict his word. God's voice will move us toward a renewed mind and victory and health. If you want to know if a voice is the voice of God or the voice of Satan, you've got to think through where is this thought going to carry me to? Is you know, so sometimes people come and you know, like, oh, God told me to quit my job. Well, did he really? I mean, let's think, let's think this through. Uh, or uh, is you quitting your job going to? Where is that going to lead you to? What's or is God is God quietly in the background saying, I think instead you might need to change your attitude and show up instead of uh, showing up with a bad attitude. Uh, it might not be necessarily God telling you to quit your job. Test your thoughts against the word of God and project out where is this going to lead me? Where is this thought process taking me? Is it taking me to defeat? Is it taking me to sullenness? Is it taking me to moodiness, anger, jealousy, bitterness? Then that is not a thought that's been planted by the Lord. The thoughts that God plants in our minds move us to renew our mind to victory, to healthy thinking, to, uh, he calls us to think on him, to meditate on the Lord and calls us to higher things, elevated things. Uh, he does not uh, plant thoughts in our head to <clears throat> make us angry at others and plant seeds of bitterness or uh, seeds of unworthiness. Uh, those are not thoughts from the Lord. Jesus is in the business of restoring people to their right mind. Uh, in Mark 5, uh, verse 15, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had possess been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed and in his right mind. The Lord is in the business of restoring people to their right mind. The thinking that should characterize us as the people of Christ, our thoughts should be of Jesus. Hebrews 3, verse 1, Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus, the apostle and the high priest whom we confess. Our thoughts should be of eternity. Colossians 3, verse 2, Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. There, here's several truths for us to think about. Jesus Christ is the only solution who can set us free from our sinful and unwholesome behaviors. We experience this freedom when we surrender our life to him. John 8, 36 says, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. 
Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. One of the things that Jesus will set us free uh, is to release us from the lies that we have, that have stayed in our minds for so long controlling us. There's a lot of thoughts that people allow to control them and really prevent them from living abundantly and fully in the life that he has. Uh, one constant thought that I know, I know that people dwell on and is a self-limiting thought, I can't do it. I, I battle with this and I've seen a lot of people ba battle with the thought, I can't do it. Something's come up and I feel called to it, but this self-defeating, I can't do it, I can't do it. Or this problem is too big, this problem's too big, it's too much for me, I can't handle it, I can't do it. Uh, those are lies. We don't have to do it. The Lord is in charge of doing it. And the more we self-defeat ourselves with our own self-talk, with talking ourselves into uh, or out of doing something that the Lord has called us to do um, with thoughts of I can't do it or believing that a problem is too big, that's not of the Lord. Our lives are shaped by what we think. What we think is a deposit of thoughts, ideas, and perceptions that we have received from our past. Family, friends, and the devil have all planted things in our minds that have placed a certain amount of control on our lives, but we don't have to allow that to be the case. Most of our unpleasant behavior are products of lies in our minds. God's way of destroying them is to confront them with his word of truth. John 8, 32, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. God gives us the power to change. We renew our mind by filling it with God's word through consistent reading and meditation of the Bible. We need to meditate on the word of God. And I know some people may feel like, oh, I don't know how to meditate. It's too hard for me to meditate. I can't figure out how to meditate. But honestly, if you know how to worry, you already know how to meditate. When you're worrying about something and you're just constantly mulling it over in your mind, that is you meditating on your worry. If you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. We need to substitute you thinking about your worries to thinking about the word of God. Meditate on scripture. Think about scripture. That's what you mull over in your mind. And that is, then it becomes a part of you. That's what starts to spill out of you. Instead of thinking about all your problems and your worries, you might as well start thinking about something that's going to move you forward in your life. Meditate on scripture. Keep that in your mind. Mull that over. Spend your time thinking about that and, uh, that is what's going to start spilling out into your life. Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 16. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing with God, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, how can a young person stay on the path of purity? By living according to your word. Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. That is the word of God. That is what we meditate on. That is what we mull over in our minds. Those are the thoughts that should be recurring in our minds. We need to identify and reject ideas that are contrary to God's word. Anything that comes to your mind that doesn't line up with the word of God, cast it down. It does not belong in your mind, and you do not have to let it stay there. You can take it captive and push it out. You can help what you think. 2 Corinthians Chapter 10, verse 5, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up to, against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. God reveals to us lies we are believing, and uh, you can identify a lie that the devil is trying to tell you a lot easier 
when you line it up with God's word. It's, it's a lot easier to identify a lie from the devil if you are full of the word of God, if you know the word of God. If it doesn't line up, it doesn't belong there. Train your thoughts on thinking God's truth. Anytime you are down and depressed, think about what you're thinking about and you'll find the root of the problem. If you are dwelling on something that you that's bringing you down, it will affect your mood. So stop, just stop for a minute. And when you realize you're down, just stop for a minute and think about what have I been thinking about? Find that thought, figure out what that trigger is. Let's find that and kick it out. We don't have to think those thoughts. Instead, we can think, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, I am a child of God. I am highly blessed and highly favored. Those are the thoughts that you can mull around in your mind. You can talk yourself into a bad mood whenever you want. It's easy to talk yourself into a bad mood, and, but you can also talk yourself out of one. What you think about is up to you. The thoughts that you have in your mind are completely up to you. Those are your choices and it takes a little bit of practice but you don't have to let every thought run away with you philippians 4 verse 8 finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things we're supposed to think about what's true and noble and right and pure and lovely instead of what's wrong and what's upsetting and what's making me angry. Um, 1 Peter 1, verse 13, Therefore, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Christ Jesus is, re is revealed at his coming. Uh, if you are down in the dumps, change you're stinking thinking. <laughs> it's time to stop thinking those thoughts that are spiraling you down and instead focus on things that will lift you up, lift up the Lord, meditate on scripture and think about who he says you are. Think about who he calls us to be and meditate on that. Boldly confess and declare God's truth about your identity in Christ. <clears throat> If you think about all of your problems and all the things that you don't have, you will pull yourself down. But if you think about all of your blessings and all of the things that you do have, you can lift yourself up. If you walk around and you, in your mind, you're thinking, I am so blessed. I have a wonderful job. I have a beautiful family. I have a lovely home. I have friends that love me. I have talents and gifts that I've been called to do. I have a work that I love. I have a church family that I love. Those thoughts will lift you up. You can do your own thinking. You do not have to accept every thought that jumps in your head. Joshua chapter 1, 1 verse 8 Keep the, this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Philippians 4.13, I can do all this through him who gives me strength. We can turn to God in prayer. Philippians 4, 6 through 7, do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ. We are in Christ, and we have the mind of Christ. We can learn to think like Christ. Don't allow your mind to go to the garbage dump. The devil is not going to stop trying to bring you down. Think about things that are going to minister life to you instead of things that will minister death. You don't have to let emotions dictate how you are going to live. We need to know the truth and let the truth set us free. How we think is one of the most important things in our lives. What we choose to think about is important. Have a mind that glorifies God and have a mind that thinks good 
thoughts about people. It's easy to get caught up in talking about things that bug you. It's easy to get caught up in complaining um, about your spouse or about your children, but instead of letting your mind go there, instead think good thoughts about people. Every time we find an ugly thought in our minds, we need to take it captive and say, no, I'm not going to think that. I am going to think good things. The devil wants to steal our joy. God wants us to be full of joy. It's the fruit of the spirit. And joy is valuable. The devil wants to take everything valuable away from us. So he tries to steal our joy. But the jo joy of the Lord is my strength. The jo joy is a fruit of the spirit. And we need to hang on to our joy by maintaining joyful thoughts in our minds. Your mind determines your spiritual and emotional health. So we need to bring those mind, bring our minds and every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus. <clears throat> how many people, honestly, <laughs> how many people think they're trusting God yet worry all the time? <clears throat> as long as I'm worrying, I'm not completely trusting God. I can't let my problems roll around and around and around in my mind trying to figure out what I need to do. I just need to ask God to show me what I need to do, pray, and then trust him. The Bible says to cast your cares on him. We're not supposed to spend a lot of time worrying. Cast your cares on the Lord and trust him. Hebrews 3 verse 1 says, Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, Fix your thoughts on Jesus, whom we acknowledge as our apostle and high priest. God has provided a way for us to not be stressed all the time by simply trusting in him. I'm not really believing God if I'm not thinking that he's going to take care of it. God is working right now in my life. If I have given it to God, if I have cast my cares on him, then I just trust him to take care of it. Everything from God comes by faith and patience. We need to have faith and patience for him to work it out. Trusting God causes, to, and causes us to enter his rest and find peace instead of worry and stress. Stress, your stress can cause a lot of physical problems of headaches, you can have all kinds of stomach trouble, sleep issues. There are a myriad of issues that can cause physical harm to our bodies by holding in stress, by allowing stress to reign in our lives. Matthew 6, 27, who among you by worrying could add one hour to your life? Stop tormenting yourself with worry. All of our negative and ungodly thoughts actually drain energy. They're very energy draining to spend a lot of time being angry, being jealous, being anxious, worrying, being bitter. Those things just kind of suck all the energy out of your life. And it changes your focus from what you should be doing. So we need to stop dwelling on those things. Stop giving energy to, to anger and stop giving energy to jealousy. Uh, if we're spending all this time focusing on what we're mad about and what we're frustrated about and what we're jealous about and, and uh, uh, what some, you know, what somebody said to us, uh, this is not helping us move forward in our lives. If that is not working, then we need to quit doing it and move to what the Lord says is going to work. If you are full of mean, bitter, hateful thoughts, you are going to feel lousy. If you are full of joy and peace and love and kindness, then it elevates everything that you think about. Your, your countenance is just lifted so much higher. Laughter heals. How many times have we heard that? Laughter is good medicine. Laughter heals. 
be joyful. Remind yourself over and over um, in Philippians verse, uh, chapter 4, verses verse uh, four uh, says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. I, I, I mean, I believe that that's the writer trying to remind himself. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. I'm saying it again to myself. Again, I say rejoice. Be joyful. joyful. John chapter 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. When we are Christians and we have the spirit in us, the fruit of the spirit lives within us. Joy, peace, love, patience. We need to use that. Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Be intentional about captivating thoughts and casting down strongholds. Most of the things that we spend a lot of time worrying about solve themselves. We don't have to get worked up about them. We need to learn to recognize when we're starting to get tense about something and learn to let it go, <laughs> relax on purpose. Um, for me, I find it really helps a lot to um, just get outside for a minute. I know a lot of us have been trapped inside for a long time, but there is something about just a little sunshine and a little fresh air. If you're feeling kind of dumpy, <laughs> just take a little time go for a quick walk. Just a little, little vitamin D therapy is, a, is, is good for us all. <laughs> and just take a breath, learn to breathe, and do some on-purpose thinking. Think about what you want to think about on purpose and intentionally. And some of us will need to stop hanging around some people. You catch what you're close to. And sometimes we are filling our minds with neg negativity from the people that we're listening to from and honestly from the things that we're reading on social media and from the news that we listen to. Here's a tip. <laughs> the news, news agencies survive on advertising. To get top advertising dollar, they need to pull in a lot of viewers. And the best way to get viewers is for to have something really enticing and salacious and fear sells. So now we have like 24 hour news, like fear of this and fear in this and these hate these people, these hate these people, and these people hate these people. And that is not what we need to be feeding our minds with. That, I mean, I have to limit it. I wanna know what the headlines are. I wanna know what I need to know. I need wanna stay, uh, in touch of what's happening in the world, but I cannot live on a steady diet of that. That's feeding my mind with fear and anger and despondency, and I just can't dwell on that. I am going to dwell on the things of the Lord, whatever is good and lovely and good report. Um, so we need to, there's some things that we might just need to separate ourselves from. Sometimes we're just scrolling, scrolling people's negative opinions negative opinions, negative opinions, hateful thoughts. It's time maybe to put this down a little bit because that is not what we want to fill our minds with. That is not most of what we're reading on there is not lovely or of good report or will cause joy or peace. Uh, the enemy likes to put junk in our minds. There's a uh, Sometimes we think, you know, I just can't do this, or this is just too hard. But instead, we need to think, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God said he would never put any more on us than we can bear. He will provide us a way out. The world is not going to change. In fact, it's probably going to get worse. If you read the end of the book, this is not as bad as it's going to get. We just need to worry about what we are supposed to do and, and what I am supposed to be, who I am supposed to be. I want to be everything that God wants me to be. 
I don't want to settle for what I've limited my own mind to be. I want to be everything God calls me to be. And I need to focus on me and my thoughts and my actions and what God has called me to be. Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 14. Not that I have already obtained all of this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of for me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Thinking about what's behind our past mistakes yesterday will prevent us from doing better. Guilt and condemnation steal our joy. They steal our energy. Your life cannot go forward if your mind is going backward. In spite of our past sins, God still wants to help us and has a good life planned for us. We need to press on toward the prize and forget about what is behind. Isaiah 43 verses one through two. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. We can control our thoughts if we believe that and allow the Holy Spirit to guide us. It's time to be intentional with our thoughts. Does anybody have any thoughts of their own on this subject? Yeah, if, you, if anybody has uh, something they'd like to share, you can unmute yourself if you're on Zoom. We've had quite a few comments uh, on Facebook, uh, just people, your rights, uh, amen. A lot of people responding to the message, a lot of uh, uh, likes and, and hearts and all that stuff. Uh, Teresa says, thank you for this lesson. It's powerful and on time as God always is. Karen Sorensen says uh, she loves the idea of meditating instead of worrying. Uh, so if anyone has anything on Zoom that you'd like to share, I think uh, Brother George came off mute. So uh, if you have something to share, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. That's good. Um, great lesson, Leanne, um, and I love the, the thoughts that you, you, you bring forward. Um, what would be good are complementary to what you've just um, teach us. I think Joyce Meyer does a book which is called Battlefield of the Mind. And I think that's a wonderful book about how we deal with um, worry, doubt, stress, confusion, depression, all that kind of thing, and how we control our thoughts. And I think that would be a good book to perhaps offer if anyone wants to buy that, to complement your lesson that you just, uh, you just teach. Also, one more thing, um, in, I think it's in the book Proverbs where it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, that is what he becomes. Um, so it would appear to me that um, thoughts are powerful things and they can lead you or distract you uh, um, in negative ways as well as positive. So we have to be clear about what we, what we say, what we do and what we think. Um, and one last thing, I remember Jesus in the wilderness, he was on his own and he was tempted. And I think that was a temptation some may say from the thoughts that came into his head that the devil put into his, his mind. And also the devil does use scriptures. So we have to be very careful some of the time um, that scripture that we may meditate on that we think perhaps does come from God because it's scripture. We have to be clear like Jesus was. He knew where that was coming from. And that was a temptation. Yes. 
That's a great point. And that Joyce Meyer book is excellent. It's very, very good. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember um, when I was younger, um, one of my friends had a, a boyfriend break up with her and she got so despondent about it. Like she was wanting to quit school and go back home because everything reminded her of him. And I, I just kept trying to remind, remind her, you cannot dwell on that. You've got to take those thoughts captive. You cannot let that change the trajectory of your life and what you're called to be. You don't have to, you don't have to dwell on that. It may have hurt and I'm not discrediting that, that, discrediting that it hurt, but those are thoughts that you can control. You can take those thoughts captive and instead meditate on the scripture and who the Lord says you are, not who your ex-boyfriend says you are, right? So, yeah, it, what we think about is really, really, I mean, it, it can control your actions. It can, it can make you do things that you should not do and are not in your best interest, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, amen. I shared about, and when I taught a few months ago, I think I shared this story of when we were, uh, Leanne and I were going out west for Christmas one year. And right before we left, uh, I had uh, somebody who really did me uh, wrong in in a big way and had upset us really bad. It was things we were counting on for Christmas. And uh, as we're driving out west, I, I was listening to music and there was a song, I'm not gonna let anything steal my joy. And uh, I knew I had to deal with it. So I didn't just like wipe it completely out of my mind, but I almost like put it on a shelf. That's what I had to do. I, I took that worry, put it on a shelf. I said, I'm not gonna drag it into Christmas and mm-hmm. dwell over it for the next two weeks. I'm gonna put it on a shelf. When I get back from Christmas, Uh, Maybe I'll feel better. Maybe I'll be in a better frame of mind to deal with it or whatever. Maybe I won't ever deal with it, but I wasn't going to let it control me. It just, it it was, uh, it was controlling me and it was like a dark cloud and I just had to uh, get rid of the dark cloud the best way I know how to. Amen. Hello, can you hear me guys, am I on? Yes. Okay, Uh, excellent lesson. Thank you, thank you, Leanne. Uh, You know, uh, I refer to uh, the character of Christ a lot. We're to strive to uh, uh, not fulfill our own character or build our own character, but, but to build the character of Christ in us. And guess what is part of the character of Christ? The mind of Christ, the mind of Christ. So when you, when you think of the mind of Christ, uh, one, one of the uh, things I always do is, is uh, you know, before I, I react, I try, uh, or even before I act, I try to say to myself, if I'm patient enough, what does the Lord think about this? How would the Lord see this? What, how, would, how would Jesus observe this scenario? And so when we look at, look at our world and everything, uh, what is the mind of Christ? Well, the mind of Christ is, uh, that all humanity is equal. Uh, we are equally sinners. We're equal. Uh, we're equally redeemed. Once we're redeemed, we're, we're just uh, the mind of Christ is that he loves everybody, everybody the same. And yes, I feel like he loves me more than the rest of, of my friends sometimes. And, and that's, a, uh, that's a joke, but that, that's a good thing to feel that special. But the bottom line is he loves every one of us the exact same. And he did the same for every one of us, which means we ought to view people as Christ views people, regardless of who they are, what they are, and uh, try to get our minds wrapped around that, that we want to be the mind, we want to live the mind of Christ in our own hearts and our own lives. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it is for our own benefit. I've heard this saying said a lot of times, so probably you have to... um, Sometimes unforgiveness is when you're harboring unforgiveness for somebody, it's like drinking poison and hoping the other person will die. (laughs) (laughs) If you're harboring unforgiveness and all you, if you're just mad and and mulling over something all the time, that's poisoning your life. 
that other person is playing golf and doing whatever. Like they're not worried about it. That's poisoning your own mind. That's a thought you've got to take captive and put away and think about things that are good and true instead. Uh, or it's not, or you're going to be in a really bad spot mentally and it's not good for you. I mean, the Lord puts these parameters around our lives because he wants the best for us. He wants good for us. And uh, we like to uh, dwell on things that drastically change who we are. And it's not who God calls us to be. So he, you know, the scripture tells us to put those things away and press on. So uh, it's really important to, to grasp this and take control of your thought life uh, or you're going to find yourself just not where you want to be. Find yourself with no joy is what you'll do. You'll wake up and uh, be on your way to heaven and be miserable. And, and that's, that's not the life that Christ intends for us. Right. Good job, girl. Man, praise the Lord. Very, very good. Great lesson tonight. Uh, anybody else got anything they want to add? Any questions from the, uh, the Facebook folks? Uh, not really, just people uh, making comments uh, on it, uh, on some of the things, you know, Marcia said great thoughts to keep in our minds this week and, and uh, a lot of amens, like I said. So uh, mm. not really a can, lot of questions. Can I, ask, uh, can I ask Leanne a question? Sure. Of course. Um, you mentioned um, meditation in your, in your lesson. Um, are there any uh, any way that you, I mean, I guess you're talking about prayer and meditation. Is there is there any way, simplistic way that we could go into that, where people could um, start to do something like that, to meditate? And You know, one of my favorite things, um, back in the 90s, they came out with like this album where it was scriptures to music. And... Uh -huh. That uh, I think like scripture to music is a great way to memorize scripture. And so sometimes I find myself just like singing lyrics to scripture songs, you know, just like over and over again. Or, um, or, you know, when Dwayne was saying, you know, he took a thought and put it on a shelf. Like I literally just have to stop and change direction of what I'm thinking. So instead of worrying about something and worrying about something, I just have to stop, like literally stop myself and say, I'm not thinking that. And then just try to pull something that I would rather think about and then try to mull that over instead. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, if there's an appli applicable scripture to the particular thing I'm going through, like the more word you have in your heart, the more that's gonna come out when it's time to meditate, when it's time to pray and think about things, the more word you have hidden in your heart, that's what, what you turn to. So uh, the, staying in the word and studying the word on your own and, and learning what the scripture has to say, that gives you more kind of ammunition in your quiver when it comes time to, when it comes time to, to take these thoughts captive. So if you, you know, if you're just getting started on it, you know, a lot of the scriptures I read tonight, but there's, there's a, just just choose one that means a lot to you. Choose one that means a lot to you and then just start mulling that over. And over time, as you begin to study the word and that becomes ingrained in your heart, you'll have more things that you can meditate on, more things that you can that you can think about. But like I would just try to stop and think about, uh, there's a scripture, um, uh, when I gaze into the night skies and see the works of your fingers, and uh, the moon and stars, the beasts of the field and the birds of the air. And when I see all that you've created, what is man that you are mindful of him? You have created, you've given him dominion over the earth and made him a little lower than the angels. Those are things that you can think about when you're feeling blue. <laughs> like, you know, those lift you, those remind you of who you are in Christ. It reminds you who God is, how big God is and how small our problems are. So like, I just, Scripture is, is the best thing to turn to, but it, yeah. in lieu of that, just pivot. <laughs> You're heading down this dark road, stop, 
pivot and think about something that's good and wholesome and true. Um, and it's really, really, really helpful. <laughs> <laughs> let me let, let me add to that, George. Uh, it's a good question, good answer as well. Uh, but let me let me tell you something that I've done. Uh, first of all, we're creatures of habit. And uh, for example, I just took an extended mile trip, which means that I had a lot of time, 20, 24 hours in a car. And uh, uh, when I left here, I left uh, something heavy in my mind that just really bugged me and that I knew I had to handle and, and look at from every angle and so forth. Well, years ago, uh, I don't know uh, when, I, when I came in upon this, but I created a habit of a slight shake of my head real fast. And, uh, you know, that you're not even noticeable by others. Uh, but but wh what got me doing that was when a thought came in my head that I knew was not supposed to be there, I just shook it out real, real easy and brought something else in. Uh, and being creatures of habit, we, we have to uh, you know, that, that's my signal that I'm not thinking right, or I'm thinking too much about that. And I want to think about something else. And so I just slightly shake my head and somehow it triggers something in me. And that whole thought process disappears for a while. And in its place comes something brand new. I don't know if that helps anybody. Uh, uh, of course, what Leanne said is true. Scripture is the absolute best. Uh, but even then, I have to remind myself to go to scripture. So I shake my head just slightly and that thought is gone, and in its place comes something more productive. That reminds Maybe, me of uh, people with yeah. rubber bands and you snap a rubber band. If yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anything, you know, anything that would help, anything that would help us, you know, to uh, take on the mind of Christ uh, is appropriate, you know. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Years ago when we were, uh, we were dealing with mom, uh, my mom in the nursing home, and we had all this other stuff going on. It was just a real stressful time. Uh, I would find myself, my default was, what a day, you know, oh, what a day. And my mind would fill in, and my mind would keep going, what a day that will be when my Jesus I will see. You know, when I look upon his face, it's almost like I would start out with this frustrating Oh, what a day. And my mind would keep going. That will be when my Jesus mm -hmm. I shall see. And uh, that that snapped me back several times, you know, and that song became very, very close to me during that time. You know, it's a beautiful song. Hmm. I, I guess we all need a trigger. That's Every what that is. Good word. Good word. Yeah. Mm. Good word. Well, thank you all for joining us. It's eight o'clock. We've had really good stuff. Wow. Leanne has uh, taught us three work weeks worth of lessons and one night. There was a, a lot of scripture in there. Uh, so it, it, it's really good if uh, this may be something worth watching again. Um, yeah. if, if, if it's something that spoke to you, uh, you may want to rewatch it because it's, it's such good reminders. Uh, for our minds. And so we, we thank you so much for uh, tuning in tonight. Tomorrow night, we have Celebrating Good News, and we have a special guest who is Dr. Ron Cruz. That's Wanda Kenny's brother, uh, who has been a chaplain for the armed forces, and now is uh, someone who commissions chaplains. So we're going to hear a little bit about his ministry and uh, what the Lord has done in his life. Amen. And, uh, he may even tell us a funny story about Wanda. We, we'll, you'll have to tune in and see. So uh, that should be fun. And then uh, Sunday morning, we'll have our uh, church at 9 and 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. We hope you all can join us. We, uh, we've, uh, we've really been enjoying that. And uh, uh, we, the chairs are spaced out. You should feel very comfortable when you come. And Pastor will be preaching again. So. There you go. All right. I okay. guess. Thank mm -hmm. you all for joining us. Anybody want uh, have anything else they want to say before we sign off? All right. Thank Good you all. Le Good lesson. Good lesson. Great lesson. Thank you. Yes. Well, we love you all. Good night. Good night, Good night. everybody.